Hey, Snackers. Have you ever wondered about making changes to network devices for fear of unintended effects or bugs? In episode 36 of DevNet Snack Minute, Matt and Kareem talk with Daniel Graziano, a software engineer with Cisco Piat's team, about Piat's and how it can be used to verify and test changes with confidence. Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Napoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 36 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute weekly all things DevNet, where we teach you about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that you might want to know about. And the cool thing that you want to know about today is PyATS with our guest, Dan. Dan, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, thank you. So my name is Daniel Graziano. I am a software engineer here at Cisco on the PyATS team. And I'm here today to talk to you about PyATS and where it fits in. So with NetDevOps tools, we've got the four main pillars. There's the lab and the simulation environment down at the bottom left here. And that's where you're going to have all of your devices in your simulation environment that you can apply changes to and then verify that those changes are how you would expect before you push them to production. And then at the top left here, you've got the design and collaborate. And this is where you've got all the tools where you're going to collaborate with different team members. And then at the top right, we've got this configuration management. And these are the tools that you're going to use to actually push configurations to your devices. Uh, so for example, that's Git, Ansible is another good one, NSO is there, and there's also DNA Center. And then at the bottom right, there's this pillar called the stateful test and validation. And this pillar, uh, before PyATS existed, the pillar itself didn't really exist either. So we've got the tools to model our lab environment. We've got the tools to push a configuration, uh, but we don't really have any tools that we could use to verify that these changes are actually uh, taking effect how we would expect and that they're not having any unexpected behaviors as well. So this is where PyATS fits in. Now, what it allows you to do is actually test your changes after you push them to the device and make sure that, say, for example, when you shut down an interface, that it's not going to have an effect on uh, another part of your device. So with PyATS, it's broken down into two different packages. There's the PyATS, which is the main package. This is the low level uh, where you're going to get all the reporting features and you're going to get all of the test case features that come with it. On top of that is where we have the Genie package. And this is where we provide the libraries such as the parsers where you can take command line output and you can parse it into a structure and be able to access information with certainty. And then you can take it a step further. And we've also got Expresso, which is the dashboard uh, for PyATS and Genie. And this is where you're able to take all of your execution runs, have them in one place with a nice dashboard uh, where you can review the results of each run. I have a question, Dan, before you, before you go on, I have a question for you, and I don't know how I don't know this, but I don't know what the ATS and PyATS stands for. <laughs> uh, so ATS is just Automated Testing Solutions or Services. I can't remember uh, which one. It's okay. one or the other. Okay. I was thinking Automated Testing System, but I wanted to make sure that was right. <laughs> yeah, I believe it's Solution. Can I ask one more question before we move on? Um, why Python specifically? Um, you know, we have all those programming language out there, but how come uh, this particular testing uh, package was built out in Python? Do you have a, do you have to happen to know that? So we wanted to use Python uh, because one, it's a language that's very easy to learn. Uh, if you don't know Python mm -hmm. to begin with, it's very quick to pick up and start using. So for a lot of those network engineers out there, not necessarily all of them are developers, right? So we wanted a language that's easy to learn. So any network developers can also utilize Python to its full extent. Uh, we do have command line based tools for those that don't know any Python and don't want to learn it. And we'll be doing a demo later on to show using those tools. So to go back to what you're saying, we have PyATS, which is the solution itself. On top of it, you got Genie, which is essentially the SDK. And then if you want to visualize, you have Expresso. I'm a network engineer and I have, you know, I'm looking into automation. How do I actually play with this? How do I get started with it? 
Yep. So the first thing you want to do to get started, uh, there's a couple different ways actually. One, you could create a Python virtual environment and you can go ahead and install the pip packages that we have for PyATS. Uh, another method you could go with it, we've got a Docker container that already has PyATS installed. So you can just spin up the Docker container. There's a couple examples included and you'll be able to uh, start playing around with it and getting familiar with some of the things that PyATS offers. Uh, so it's quick to get started. We've got a getting started guide that shows the installation process. It'll show uh, running a few different examples. And I'm assuming that's on DevNet, right? So developer.cisco.com slash PyATS? Correct. So there is some there. I can show it if you'd like. If you click on the docs at the top right here, uh, it'll bring you to the documentation page. And on this page, if you look underneath the learning tab, there's both a getting started guide. And then if you want to start developing features for PyATS, you can also do that through there. We've also got this hands-on learning section where there's the DevNot sandbox that you can use. There's various learning labs that you're able to do. And then if you wanted to, there's these kind of DIY courses that various members of the community that's created, and you're able to do those as well. And then we've also got podcasts and videos from other members of the community as well uh, about using PyATS and some of the features it has. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, I don't want to belabor the point anymore, but I'm really excited to see this in action. Can you can you show us a little demo of PyATS, please? Sure. So the first thing you're going to need uh, when you're interacting with PyATS, you're going to need what's called a testbed file. And all a testbed file is, is it's simply going to contain the devices that are in your testbed. So inside this, I've got one device here, and it's called CSR1000V. Uh, the al alias is just another way you, you can refer to this. So I could call this device one, and I could refer to it as device one. And then underneath, I've got various connection information. So with PyATS, you can connect through many different methods. So we've got CLI support, there's REST support, there's Yang, there's GNMI. Uh, so if you want to do testing through those interfaces, you're able to as well. And then you just define which credentials you're going to use to connect to this device. In my case, it's just Cisco all around. And then you'd also specify which operating system and which platform this device is as well. And then it's the same thing for the second device I have. So in this testbed file, I've just got those two devices. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a snapshot of the BGP feature on this device, and we're going to save it to an output directory. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a change on the device to simulate uh, something happening. Maybe we went home for the day, we came in the next day, and the network's not working anymore. So let's go ahead and take that first snapshot. So we're going to use a command. It's going to be called PyATS learn. And we're going to pass in the feature we want to learn. So we're going to learn this BGP feature. Then we're going to give it that testbed file I just showed you. And then we're going to save it to an output location. So I'm going to call this before. So now when we run this, what's happening is it's going to take that testbed file, it's going to load it up, and it's going to connect to all the devices in the testbed, and then it's going to execute various commands to learn about that BGP feature. It's going to take that raw output, convert it into a parsed Python dictionary, and then it's going to save it to a few files for us so we're able to look through and do a comparison later on. So we can see here in the summary, this is the summary for that first device. We learned the BGP feature, and we can see that there's two files that it created. There's that op structure, which is the Python dictionary. And then there's also the console.txt, which is just the raw output. So we can take a quick look at these. So this is that Python dictionary I was talking about, and you can see it contains information about the BGP feature. And then it's the same thing with the raw output. If we just wanted to see what the show commands were returning, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this. Uh, you can look at it here. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to connect to one of my devices, and I'm just going to make a quick change to it. Uh, 17012. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my uh, BGP router here. And I'm going to change the neighbor remote as. So I'm going to go neighbor and remote as. And I'm just going to change it to a different value. So now that I've disconnected and we've made a change to simulate that something has changed, let's go ahead and take our second snapshot. So it's going to be the same command, but this time I'm going to save it to a directory called after. 
So it's doing the same thing. It loads the testbed file. It's going to connect to all the devices in the testbed, execute those handful of show commands, parse them into a structure, save it into a files just like we see here. And we got the two summaries for the devices. So now if I was just to do a, an ls-al on this directory, I can see there's that after and there's that before directory. So if I do pyts dash dash help, we can see some of the other various commands that we have. So we just use this learn command. What we're going to do now, we're going to use this diff command to do a diff on those two snapshots and be able to see exactly what had changed. So pyts diff, we're going to give it the before and we're going to give it the after. And then I'm going to save it to a directory called diff. Okay. So now we can see that it created a diff for each device. Here's the CSR1000B device and the NX OSV1 device. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And we can see in the diff, it looks similar to a git diff, where the minus means something was there and it's not, and the plus means, well, it wasn't there and now it is. So we can see that the neighbor, it used to have two paths and now it has one. We can also see that the state of this connection went from established to idle. And scrolling down, we can see exactly what had changed. So there's that remote as I changed. It was 65,000, and now it's 64,000. It's the same thing on the other diff. Folks, look at the other device. And we'll be able to see that this neighbor, OK, well, it was established, and now it's active because it's not connected to the other one. It's looking for that connection. Right, so this allows you to quickly pinpoint, like if you came into the office and you were responsible for making sure a network was working, you came in and it wasn't working, you'd normally have to go run all these show commands and try to figure out what's happening. But what you could do, you could set up a cron job, take a snapshot every day, and the day you come into the office when it's not working, just take another snapshot, do the comparison with a known working day, and you'll be able to quickly see what had changed so you can fix that. Not only that, you can probably expand a little bit further and detect, read the changes and go back out via restconf, netconf directly to the, to the device to, to kind of roll back the changes. Yep, you could do exactly that. You could also just take a snapshot of the device. And if you know that something's wrong, you can roll back using that snapshot. Yeah. So PyTS, you can take it beyond the command line. You can start writing test scripts. And in those test scripts, you could be doing this. You know, take a snapshot. Compare it with the previous one. If it doesn't make sense or it doesn't equal each other, then we're just going to roll back to the previous snapshot. And Daniel, this is awesome, but unfortunately, <laughs> this is all the time we have. I could sit here and, and watch you play with Genie and PyETS all day long. Uh, but we, before we let you go, we do ask everyone uh, this very important question. If you had a superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh... <laughs> To be honest, for me, I think I'd probably want to have teleportation powers. Uh, the reason why I want to do that is like we've been stuck at home due to COVID. We haven't been able to travel much. Uh, so with teleportation, like if I wanted to travel, I could just you know snap my fingers and there we are. I'm in Australia or in New Zealand or Thailand, wherever. Yeah, I think I... that sounds super fun. I wouldn't mind traveling too. It sounds good. Well, snackers, awesome. that's that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of DevNet Snack Minutes. Thank you, Daniel, for joining us and showing us a cool uh, demo with PyATS. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, snackers. All right, thank you.